Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix, and welcome to probably my most complex science video yet. In today's episode, as the title very well may suggest, we are going to be testing out the advanced cannons, and trying to get a very basic cannon functioning. Not even a turret, we just want a stationary AA cannon with fragment warheads working, and that is the task today. Because, as always, I am a person who learns best through failure, someone who learns through trial and error, and watching tutorials never seems to work for me. So, rather than spoil it for me and view other people's videos, because there are lots of them out there, very good tutorials indeed, I've decided to keep myself completely blind until I finally decided to get the dev patch myself. So in today's episode, we'll be trying our best to make a cannon. So I've not really looked at anything in particular just yet. I was going to do all this off camera, but I decided that it'd be best to share this experience. So please bear in mind there will be very obvious mistakes. This probably won't be the only episode touching on the advanced cannons before we bring them into the campaign. So in, in the comments, feel free to leave any suggestions, but please bear in mind I probably fix them in the subsequent episodes, as I will be recording these back to back. Okay, enough of that talking done. Let's start out with the AI. So, we have the basic firing piece and we've just put down this here. Now these control your elevation and horizontal firing arcs. Yep, they do. So I've went straight towards the AI segment, which of course can't fire very much left and right, but can fire up and down well. Actually, by the looks of it, it can only fire up quite well. Is there actually an indication anywhere saying the exact numbers, perhaps in the actual build itself? Ah, there we are, between 18. So max elevation, min elevation between 5 and 15. With O, of course, gauge will also change. That gauge will make it less flexible. Okay, that's rather awesome. Oh, actually, no, high gauge can look higher, but can, can't look quite as low. Okay, that's all cool. That's all nice to know. So now let's go ahead and add ourselves a barrel. Barrels are there, so we have the regular barrel, we have the muzzle brake. The muzzle brake reduces recoil, but slightly lower speed as well. Oh, I don't want that. Well, at least not on this, which is the Nurgle Hut, which is essentially a floating platform. And we have the Bore Evacuator. The Bore Evacuator present, sorry, prevents gases from leaking back into the firing piece. It provides a modest reduction in cooldown time, but pre presents a weak point on the barrel. Okay, so I assume we want that quite early. So let's have it one in, and then just do these. So that doesn't stack, it said. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Obviously, speed is very key if you're going with something which is meant to be firing quite well. Firing at things which are rather quick. Okay, we'll go with that. So next then, I assume we need to actually connect the stuff to the firing piece. Now, is this the same as the regular firing piece in that it can't be connected from the back? Okay, it is, so let's just do this. And then, is there anything which can be put there? Because we do have it... Uh, they tend to lay it out really well in terms of what connects to what. So the gauge increase. Increases the size of the firing chamber and shell gauge. Okay. We have a way of splitting them. That's actually really nice. And we have a cooling unit. This component vents heat and decreases the cooldown time of the barrels, allowing faster firing in certain circumstances. I assume those certain cir circumstances are if you've got gauge already. Okay, so where did gauge go? Okay, it's not showing, me up, any, it's not showing up any arrows, and I'm assuming maybe here. Okay, it is excellent. So you can attach gauge directly behind the gun itself. In that case, I'm going to have two of those, and let's have two cooling units. Again, I don't know how this is efficient or not. I've just put these in. We're happy with that. Okay, let's carry on. And that looks like a really nice barrel. Pew pew. Okay, what next? Obviously, we need auto loaders. Allows the attachment of ammo clips and ammo input feeders. This auto loader. Handles shield to one. Of course, yeah. So a big difference between this and the custom cannons is that you can customize the shells that go into your cannons, which means well, you have a whole world of um, a whole world of, of of variety and customizability. I do believe you can actually make fragmented shells, which is freaking awesome. 
So auto loaders, we have the 2 meter, the 4 meter and the bullet feed. So what's the difference between a bullet feed and a regular? Allows the attachment of ammo clips. This auto loader handles shells up to 1 meter long. The belt fed loader loads much faster than the traditional loader, but the clip cannot be reloaded during the firing phase and cannot be fired during... Okay, nope, I do not want that. I want my thing to be constantly loading, of course. Hmm. Now, saying that, if you're using a gun that perhaps doesn't always have a lock on, that might be really good since you'll have more downtime. But for now, we'll go with more auto loaders. So we can put these on the side, okay. Now, I do completely understand this is not the most compact way of doing things, but this is the best way to put them down and allow me to still see what's going on. As I, oops, as I, as I want to see exactly what's going on with all the different parts, how they interact. So having them all compacted together, I wouldn't be able to tell what the hell I'm doing. So what next? Ammo clips. You see, that's what I'm saying. It's all built really nicely that you, could, you can kind of go down the line and it tends to work. Now there is a guide here and we'll do that in a second because I actually have no idea how to customize the actual shells themselves. Or actually load this thing, because apparently that's weird as well. As much as I've tried to avoid spoilers, sometimes spoilers are thrown at you. Ammo clips connect to the, the, the auto loaders. Ammo intakes connect to ammo clips and fill the clip with ammo. Ammo intakes. What's an ammo? Oh, this thing, I'm assuming. Ammo input feeder? Okay, I'll assume that's that. Uh, da, 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 da. This clip stores shells up to one meter long, so yeah, we're going with really small shells if we're going with AI. So. Okay, yeah, the connection arrow is on the bottom there, so let's do this. And I assume we could go ahead and just do this, sure. Can these connect to each other, though, to make like a stacking piece? They can! Okay, let's have the top one then as two high and the bottom one as one high, just, just, just to see the difference as we carry on. So the next thing then, like we were just saying, is the ammo input feeder. Accepts ammo from the ammo output feeders. Can connect into autoloaders or the front and back of ammo clips. Okay, oh, we could put them on these autoloaders then. Okay, so for now... Although it does say one times faster loading due to multiple clip inputs. So, wouldn't it be better to... Just... So I took away that. It's still the same. Okay. For now, just for now, we're going to remove those and put these on here to see if they do connect. Okay, they do. And then by the looks of it, they can go on the edge of this. Okay, that's neat. That's neat. And can we put them on here as well? Okay. So we completely square this up. Oh, uh, I, I can already see how, how you do that more efficiently. It would be a matter of a maximizing surface area with the um, with the connected parts. So probably like a rack system having them as small blocks going up. Okay, that makes complete sense. Okay, what next then? The height... The Hydraulic Recoil Absorber. This component will absorb recoil when the gun is fired. It has to be placed on the gauge increase. Okay. Ooh, hello. Wow. Well, let's have the one meter version then. And that goes here, did it say? That does... Oh. That seems really odd. Look at... Look. Oh, it connects on top, I think. Oh, okay. Okay, that's neat. Does it actually have any negative to it, though? That's a question. Doesn't seem to. Doesn't seem to. Okay, we'll leave it as it is, then. We'll leave it as it is, then. So, that's all the basic stuff done, I think. So now, how on earth do we arm this thing? So it's... Okay, let's have a look at the guide. Okay, yep. Yep, the manlets, the barrels, gauge increases, gauge splitters, we've done that, coolers... Cannon barrels each have a cooldown time calculated after every shot, based on the speed of the shell and its volume. Cooling units decrease the cooldown time. Oh. Maybe maybe we should have added more of those. Auto loaders, yep. Clips gone top, yep, then we have those. Well that one's a bit on the side, but that's fine. Okay, ammo output. Ammo outputs are part of the ammo storage system, not part of the cannon system. Oh. Oh, it's completely separate. Okay. So it's not even part of the cannon. That's kind of awesome. The ammo storage system can be built on the hull with the cannon system being built on the turret. Um, each module has length. Da -da 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 -da. An ammo controller is the main component of an ammo storage system. Each customizer provides two shell modules. Shell mo modules 
allow you to design the shell. Okay. Okay, each module has a length equal to the diameter of the shell. So a four module shell of diameter 20 centimeters is 80 centimeters long. When using a six module shell, it would be 120 centimeters long and would need at least a two meter. What? So a four module shell of diameter. Oh, okay, okay. I just read that completely wrong the first time, in my head at least. Okay, so we want to use one or two then. Or just one, honestly. Okay, well, we'll have a play around with that in a second. Ammo parts. Ammo part boxes provide the actual supply of ammo. When the shell is made, ammo is taken from the ammo part boxes. And that's it. Okay, so that doesn't seem too bad. I mean, that seems pretty simple. I'm assuming it's in here then with the ammo controller. So, oops. So let's go. Ooh, okay, getting a bit of weird lag here. I think it's just because I've been in the sandbox for like two hours because I was messing around with the bunker before we did stuff. So, ammo controller, we put that down. Leading to the... where is it? The... this is the shell customizer? Okay, there we go. So, could we have two or four, did it say? Uh, if we did it like... I think it's only, we can only have this one, isn't it? And by two, I mean I was looking at those little yellow segments. Oh, I see! So each one of those is part of the shot itself. That's cool. Wow, there's so much here. Okay, let's go with basics, basics. Gunpowder casing. Good powder casing, standard propellant for launching shells with reasonable accuracy and velocity. Okay, that's, you know, you hit that, it goes bang. Awesome. Frag warheads. Creates a cloud of shrapnel upon detonation. Okay. Let's have two of those then, I guess. And what could we put here? If we add more gunpowders though, does it... Hmm. Can we have more gunpowder for more speed? Is that... Wow, look at all these things. Oh, actual ends to the thing. Oh, that makes sense. A sabbat head, highest AP, uh, shaped charge. Okay, this is really... I think I'm going to need to read this a bit later on. Again, today we just want to make the really basic cannon, maybe a basic turret, no more. Next time we'll get into details with this, and then perhaps the railgun itself, the railgun being easily the most complex element. So, let's just choose a quick head. Significantly lowers AP, but concentrates all explosives, don't care about that. Honestly, more AP might be better, to be perfectly honest. No AP, but uses all immediately connected explosive charges to blast a stream of superheated armor-piercing copper. Oh yes, that one, please. That seems the coolest. Okay, so this might be two meters. Then I have a horrible feeling, but does it actually say anywhere how? We'll check in a second. So, sure. Is anything else we want to put on here though? Stabilizer, thin body, slows it down. Nope, we want speed more than anything else. That's cool. Oh, fuses! Lots of different kinds of fuses. That's actually really cool. Oh, that one's fantastic! Penetration Death Fuse. Ability to determine how many meters of armor to penetrate, or how many seconds from first service. Okay, well, for now we'll just leave it as two gunpowder. I don't know if that will actually make a difference. It probably won't, just saying. But again, we'll see in the future when we do more details. So that's the shell we will be creating. And we'll soon see if that's actually big enough or sm Well, you know, if it's actually too big. So, shell casing. Because that's one thing I'm a little bit confused about. Well, that's how it looked like on the thing. So, quick, quick, can we just connect them anywhere? Oh, cool. So these will draw from our normal ammo to produce stuff. So the next... What the hell's an ammo router? A vent for routing ammo cables from your constructibles to sub-constructibles. Okay, so that's to do with a turret. We don't need to read that now. Ammo output feeders. Would more help? I'm assuming more is going to help. So let's just do this. I assume this is actually going to drain the things too quickly, but sure. There we go. Now, how on earth do I connect these two together then? That's a really big question. Oh, that's... okay, so we just... oh, uh, this one. So... oh, it's working! Okay, so that... okay, so two... oh, yeah, okay, so two is one meter... oh, no. Containing zero shells. Why are you containing zero shells now? You was containing a shell, but now, but now you're not containing a shell. Now you're containing one shell again. Also, that's really slow. Um, I'm assuming then perhaps that... 
isn't working correctly. And it has two shells. Is that really going to be that slow? Oh, of course, I only have one of these on, don't I? Okay, cool, so I can actually just go from next intake to next intake. That's nice. Assign all assi unassigned intakes to this ammo source. Oh, they're all connected to that one controller, so if I click this, all of these should now be... Okay, yeah, all of these are now loading, question mark? Yes, they are, excellent, okay, so all of our guns are now actually loading up. Really slowly. Is there an issue? Do we not have enough of these? The ammo parts have gone down to a really low amount, but not zero. And now it's maxed out again. Clearly I've done something wrong here, because they're not... Half of them aren't even loading. Oh, there simply isn't enough of um, of the output feeders to feed into every single one of those. So, so basically, this is too small. Well, that's fine for now. Oh, it's, it's loading. It's definitely loading. Maybe these shells should be, should be smaller, though, because it did say the shell size does affect the cooldown. We, and, and we want this thing to shoot fast. Oh, that sounded cool. Pew! Wee. Damn, that goes far. Not much of a... Right... Uh, yeah, sorry. Blah, blah, blah. Not much of a arc of fire, but of course that's why we're using an AI segment. Okay, so... Let's, let's test this out, and after that we'll test out these smaller shells and see if there's a major difference. So let me just spawn in an enemy that can't fight back, like an ocelot. Let's figure out where it is. Okay. Oh, wait, we have to put an AI, on, an AI on this thing first, don't we? Like any old turret. So, the firing piece is kind of hidden there, though. How, do I, how am I going to get the AI nearby? Oh, underneath. That might that actually make a lot of sense. Does that connect? Yes, it does. Excellent. And we connect that to the receiver, which will connect it to the mainframe. And there we go. We now have a turret which is, well, this should be there. Sadly, the, the Ocelot does actually self-destruct after a really short period of time because, well, it's got no AI. So if we, if we put it towards the west, that should be this side. Yep, okay. Let's turn the whole um, thing to aim at that. Hopefully, maybe, you wanna shoot and do attack it? Whoa, look at the airburst effect, jeez. That's really cool. Oh, look, fragments. Oh, that's so awesome. Okay, well, I'm already in love with this cannon, and it's really simple. Okay, let's summon something that actually can fight back. So first of all, let's just save this vehicle as the Nurgle Hut test, and let's put in an enemy... Uh, marauder! Oh dear, I did not expect it to be so close, that's not good. Fire! Do damage! It's not the most damage in the world, but it's... Actually, that is pretty nasty! For such a simple cannon, that's actually pretty cool. Although now we are way too high up and, well, we can't actually hit the thing because we're too high up. So let's lower ourselves into the water. We are watery death. There we go, back to firing. Well, it's not the best cannon in the world, but... Considering I didn't even make the fragments actually fire forwards. Okay, neat. So we need to focus, well, figure out a lot of things. But let's destroy the enemy vehicles. But yeah, okay, so it's functioning. It's fun I'm not happy with it, though. That's not good enough, but it functions. So let me destroy all this, and let me try it out with much smaller shells. And then I'll mess around with some other things, and we will be right back. Well, some science has been done, and now the AI gun sounds more like this. <laughs> Which is absolutely insane. So it turns out, after having a look, having only a single, well, halving the shell size definitely makes the gun a lot faster because, of course, things reload a lot faster and more guns can go through the barrel a lot quicker. The thing I am noticing, however, it has this weird little cooldown period, well, a little reload period after each volley. It volleys, then it reloads, and it volleys, and it reloads over and over again. And my theory is that that is the autoloaders having to actually manually put the next shell in, and that takes longer than it takes to fire. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, nine. Okay, so it possibly shoots nine shots. I'm not sure exactly if that's... It's pretty much impossible to count. 
but there's a good chance that that's nine shots and then it takes the time to actually reload. So what I'm going to do is we're going to massively increase the ammo thing underneath here and we're going to add way more auto loaders with the inputs on them to see if that is actually what's causing it. I also do apologize for the frame loss. I have reset the game three times. It could just be the dev version isn't playing very nice today, but I'm not too sure. But next time I'll make sure it's fixed if at all possible. Well, I think this is a good um, note to end the video on. It turns out I was completely correct in terms of that weird delay. Observe. Yeah, that is absolutely insane. I'm not quite sure about the noise, however. It does sound a little bit silly, but my lord! Look at that! It's... It's beautiful in every single way. So all I've done, essentially I doubled the amount of racks we had, and then I also massively increased this. I'm also starting to realise that these things run out of ammo quite quickly, so we definitely need a more efficient way to have the autoloaders. Once again, please bear in mind, this is my first time messing around with the cannons, and I do very much appreciate advice, but also bear in mind this is going to be a video recorded in a batch, and I'll probably be uploading this one outside of the normal 2pm, 6pm time slot anyway, so yeah, that's absolutely phenomenal. So, summoning a Marauder again, I guess, and let's get over to the control section over here so we can actually aim the entire thing at it. I'm not sure how effective that's actually going to be, but I don't really care, honestly. Well, it's trying to fire underwater, which isn't really the best. Oh, wow. Okay, more effective than I expected. Uh, we not aiming anymore at the target? No, we're not. Okay, try again. Just... <laughs> That's insane! It's actually not taking up much ammo either. Our ammo is actually not going down very fast at all. But I don't think this thing will be able to fire forever with the current load we've got going in it. But, oh my... Well, there we go. It's finally reached a stage where I think... Nope, it hasn't. It was just the aim was off. That completely obliterated the, the Marauder. That was amazing. That was absolutely... Um, look how many shells it's throwing at it! Oh, that is so cool. Okay, this needs to be made into a turret, and all of this needs to go under a hull. That is absolutely fantastic in every single sense of the word. I am really looking forward to messing around more with this and making an actual efficient one. So next time, we'll be making this into a turret, an, an efficient turret, and hopefully making an end AI an end AI design, and soon after that we'll be messing around with the railguns, hopefully making a really powerful weapon. So, thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this short episode of me messing around and figuring out the very basics. I hope it maybe has helped some people who were confused about the very basics of the gun as well. Like I said before, I do find that trial and error and just messing around like this is the best way to learn. And if you have, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, we'll be making a turret. Thank you again, and goodbye.